Malungil sil sel mergi the rogui ega tamral ngat ngat tel gukmlo sab ella ambassador ablu ramrigel Erin Dry ma Miss Joyce Isal ma Public Affairs Officer Jason ang dinggati dong Okrat Kul ang dinggle mga limera madretelel magdamal merenga sulel mle ang kang amle leng di way gitel other bela meral lungi larungu de olde o larungu de luase finally mlam kat mokutyal tukora kampak to gitel dim dinge luase ngartiang e ba i di al sal sual nga ka oger ager ba i mal open ngin lekor kumil other abway luase please al ngarnyang idil kermiul gire la tukora kampak to al uba urelel ngartiyal blur bela ang mal madal tmuil mangira de muar kumiura 488-5350 ang ngaringya Miss Joyce Isaal man sabi el selmom gadong ang sabi el malagot tokor belaw ang ya o yudan mo el tokor amarigel e aguk selhenzi ya daya Miss Isaal aguk mo o oidil tokor belaw legor kumiw makmutyal tea le welcome US Ambassador so I give it to you and you can go ahead and say your welcoming remarks and tell us why you're here and what's the good news all right well first of all Jennifer thank you so much for having me on the show it's really an honor for me to be here with you today I'm so glad that Joyce is here from the embassy she's the brains of the embassy you know the the one with all the knowledge at the at the embassy so why we're here I'm just so excited you know the as everyone knows the um, United States Congress has passed the legislation um, for the uh, Compact Review Agreement. President Biden signed it into law last year. I think this is a really big deal. This is um, the foundation of our bilateral relationship, and it has been for 30 years. And now we we we've kind of renewed our vows mm -hmm. for the next 20 years. And so the next 20 years starts right now. Thank you so much. We're so excited. I think uh, a lot of people from the community thought that it won't happen for the next maybe month or maybe next year. As you all know that uh, uh, the last administration tried to work it with the former President Trump and it was in sign and so here we are so we're excited that you know you, we are all a part of what is history in the making. So thank you so much. Exactly. Um, and I, I think, you know, it, there was a little bit of lag there to get the final bill signed by Congress. But if we take a step back and look historically, you know, the, the previous compact review agreement wasn't due to expire until the end of this year. Yes. So it, we're actually a little bit ahead of the game. Yes. And I think a few months from now, we'll, no one will remember this mm -hmm. little wait that we had. Mm -hmm. No, sometimes, uh, as you all know, you know, we all go through stormy seasons and then eventually it subsides and set on their sunshine and smiles <laughs> nothing comes easy especially when you work hard for it you know in the bible it says if you don't sweat in the forehead nothing comes easy you know and you have to work hard and i think everybody put all their effort and their dedication into it and this is the fruit of the labor that has finally come out exactly and, and like you said it, the negotiations started with the previous administration in both of our countries and I really give credit to President Whips and Minister Udui and the um, Palawan the entire negotiating team uh, for their partnership and the focus on getting this done in a timely way that the people of Palau you know will benefit from so uh, it's it's great news it's it's really worth celebrating yes I think if we had fireworks, we'd be shooting fireworks <laughs> tomorrow, Youth Day. Well, I heard that idea. you you folks uh, have a small uh, signing ceremony. If you want to tell us more about that tomorrow, you did a sign field. Yeah, I think um, we're, we're going to. Well, first of all, I'm just so excited to be going to the Little League <laughs> opening day ceremony. That's what I was looking forward to um, originally. Um, and that's tomorrow. And then I understand at the, at the same time, or, you know, right at, there at, at the field, we will also have the uh, official exchange of diplomatic notes. This is the final, final step wow. we need to, for both countries to confirm to one another um, that our systems have accepted mm -hmm. the COFA agreement and now it's, mm -hmm. it's actually in force. So, so we have accepted the new vows. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, I heard that you were supposed to actually be an umpire for the Major League Baseball. I thought. And what happened? And now you're an ambassador. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I, well, I'll tell you. Can I tell you a quick story? Yeah, about sure. So I, I went to umpire school when I was wow. younger. I thought I was going to be a major league umpire. That was my goal. And it was the same time that I was applying to join the State Department, the embassy. And so my wife... My wife said, let me get this straight. We have the opportunity to live in Tokyo and Paris and London for the next 30 years, or I can follow you around upstate New York in the minor leagues <laughs> while you maybe become an umpire. And I was like, yeah, which one do you think we should do? And she was like, this, this conversation's over. So well, here I am. Um, and I think you were the blessing. And that's why this whole thing with the compact team, yeah. we finally see... Uh, magic unfo unfolding right before our eyes. <laughs> Absolutely. I feel blessed yes. to be part of this. Yeah. Yes, and we are so thankful and that uh, we are continue to strengthen the bond and the diplomatic ties between Palau and I, the U.S. I think it's really, really important. But I was telling the president after the show that I hope that, you know, that not just during the negotiation, we come together and really find ways to try and move forward, but to find ways on how can we continue every single day uh, bonding and building that partnership, because I think the more we communicate, the more we get together, and bond is where there's a lot of results that can come out of you know relationships. So thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's no bound of words that can thank you and the U.S. government for your assistance to Palau. And yeah. it's nice to see after the war and now, and we continue this relationship. Although they said that it was in December 6th of 1996 was when the diplomatic relationship was actually established. But to me, I think it goes way, way back until now, you know. It was just something official through, you know, documents or agreement. But I think the relationship just has been there. Here we are after the war. We're still looking for, you know, um, the bodies or of the people who fought in the war. Yeah. And so, and that continues until this day. Right. And so, I think the relationship is so deep, and it's very important. And we must learn to just continue to communicate and better understand each other more. And uh, I know we're here to talk about COFA today, yeah. but but speaking of of you know the continuation of the war, mm -hmm. this and this being the 80th anniversary mm -hmm. of the the Battle of Palau, we are um, the United States Embassy has taken the lead on um, refurbishing the the War Memorial mm -hmm. Museum down there, and wow. I'm very excited about that. But I, I'm also that's why I'm so glad that Joyce is here today. Mm -hmm. To your point, um, you know Joyce. Joyce actually lived the original mm -hmm. compact agreement. Didn't you say you were like going door to door? For the eight eight side, we we campaigned hard as a young person. Then we campaigned hard for the compact. It was a friendly campaigning. We know we had a lot of people who were a no, but we also were adamant. Young as young people, we were adamant about our future and the future of the young ones. They're off. The, yeah. So. Yeah. And speaking of the future, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, uh, I'll be talking to little leaguers tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, by it's the exciting. by the time yeah. this compact uh, ends, you know, many of them will have children. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and they'll be on the negotiation. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's about the future. Yeah, yes. Really um, Ambassador. So um, if we can get into the COFA. Um, my first question is, could you provide an overview of the recent bill passed by the USA Congress and signed by President Biden, which allocates $889 million for just hospital, security and defense, education, climate change initiatives in Palau? Yeah, I'm happy to. And, and um, I'll, I'll just give you the overview. And if you want me to get more specific, let me know. I can get into the details. But like you said, it's $889 million total over the next 20 years, and that's split up into a few different categories. So the, the first one is, is um, grant assistance. So what that is is it's $20 million a year that goes to the Palauan government. And we, we have put, um, not restrictions on it, but we've agreed that it will go to specific sectors. So it'll go to health, education, uh, climate change, and then what I call law and order. So the judicial system, you know, uh, judges and prosecutors and public defenders, as well as public safety uh, uh, and, the, and the police. 
Um, and that's $20 million to start, and there's a little bit 2% inflation every year. So it'll, it'll go up as, as time goes on. In addition to that, there's money for infrastructure. There's money for paying down uh, the debt that Palau incurred, which was unforeseeable before COVID happened. So the, the COVID-related um, effects on the economy. And then there's going to be $100 million of, of new money for um, Palau's trust fund. So it's money that Palau can save and earn more uh, 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 interest or um, draw from for bigger projects, such, such as a hospital, perhaps. That's awesome. And my second question is, in terms of strengthening, strengthening the relationship between Palau and the USA beyond COFA negotiation, which we sort of talked about earlier, what steps can be taken to deepen this partnership and create a more sustainable uh, relationship or bond? Yeah, so to start with, um, in order to maintain uh, or to strength, continue to strengthen the relationship, what's really important to me is that our two countries never take each other for granted. So in, in the case of the United States, if, if I'm being per perfectly honest, if the United States is being perfectly honest with itself, we did not pay sufficient attention to the Pacific Islands region maybe 10 or so years ago. I'm very pleased with the Biden administration's focus again. You know, they have their Indo-Pacific strategy and the first ever Pacific Partnership strategy. So the United States, I think, is, is, is now back at, at a level that, that we should be in, in not taking the region for granted. On the other hand, Palau should not take, you know, this beautiful relationship we have for granted either. I, I know there are others trying to compete for influence in the region. And, you know, one of the things that's important to point out about the COFA is we did not say sign this or we're going to stop all of our tourists coming to your country, for example, right? So, so I think it's, it's incumbent on both sides to realize, you know, this is in our best interest and let's keep, let's keep uh, the relationship moving ahead. But then in terms of like specific things that we can do to keep the relationship strong, something I'm really super excited about is the Peace Corps is coming back. And, you know, that's been announced publicly and there's some Peace Corps advance teams here in Karor right now trying to, you know, figure out how they're going to set up an office and talking to the ministers about what work should the volunteers be doing. So I think uh, that's going to be huge. And then, of course, it's important to point out we're, we're celebrating the, the COFA signing, as we should, um, but the ongoing work of the embassy every day um, will continue to strengthen the relationship. So we have, you know, the US, USAID is working on climate change and um, disaster relief and trafficking in persons and economic development. We have U.S. Department of Agriculture helping plow with its forests and its soils so that, you know, there's sustainable agriculture and um, we have ongoing people-to-people -people ties, you know, through our public affairs section and things like that. So that kind of work, you know, now we, we need to really redouble our efforts to make sure this momentum that we have from COFA I think Less. both sides, yeah. Palau and, yes. And um, I heard you were a Peace Corps yourself in Nigeria and South Africa. Niger, West yeah. Africa, yeah, yeah, I was. I worked in um, agriculture research during the very, very um, severe drought years. Remember the We Are the World? Yes. It was during that time. Um, that but was our class song. <laughs> was it really? Yes. But it was, it was just, I loved the Peace Corps so much. And, um, and I, you know, the Palauans that I talked to who remember... Peace Corps teachers, you know, loved that experience. And I'm, I'm just so glad it's coming back because I think the Peace Corps is the, really the best people-to-people -people program any, of any country anywhere. Not only that, then we can also get people who volunteer through Peace Corps on specialized areas that can actually help Palau. Right. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I think to start with, they'll probably be involved in education, which is great. Yeah. But then, you know, there, there's possibilities for agriculture or health and other things. Too. Health, and I think uh, we need the uh, IT, too. Oh, okay, great. With AI coming around, then, you know, I think we need, our, we need to um, look into laws yeah. on AI and how TikTok is becoming such an issue. And now they're forcing a U.S. country, a U.S. Uh, citizen to actually buy or buy out TikTok from China, so it doesn't. I don't know. I watch the news, so. <laughs> well, yeah. Absolutely, an, uh, an important issue for you know yeah. 
but a generation like me who didn't grow up with computers yeah, really too. grappling with the, the implications of all that absolutely but that would be a whole different Peace Corps than what I was in if we're talking AI Peace Corps <laughs> yes. volunteers but it's amazing how they just go in and then just create Trump saying all this stuff when it's actually when it's all fake and Biden all fake news and it's amazing I go oh my god you see how these hackers can just get in and just drain people's account and you know, and I think Palau should actually really look into it. I think we need more uh, people who are, are specialized in the IT who can actually assist us in, you know, um, anything that has to do with online gaming, cybersecurity. I think it's very important because that's where we're heading towards, too. Well, that's a great idea. I'll, I'll take a note of that. I'll, I'll look for ways that we can help Palau with that. Yes. So thank you. And then my third question, it seems like nobody is calling, so I'll ask my third question. There are concerns within the community about the level of control exerted by the U.S. over the funds provided through the COFA agreement. How can Palau ensure a balance between utilizing these funds for national development and meeting, meeting the obligations outlined in the, in the agreement? I'm, I'm really glad you asked that because I think there's a, a slight misperception. So the U.S. doesn't really control any of the money that we're giving to Palau um, in, in, the, in the strictest sense. What, what we've done is, because both sides agreed to this, we've, we have designated certain sectors that are focused on the people of Palau as opposed to the politicians mm -hmm. of Palau. So like I, I think I said before, the, the sectors that the COFA money, the the, um, the uh, grant assistance is, is $20 million a year is um, designed for is health, education, climate change, um, and then law, law and order. Uh, there, there is um, also a specific wording that says none of this money can go to the office of the president, the OEK, the judiciary, or, or in like just blank checks to the states. So the, the purpose of that is this shouldn't be for politicians to buy themselves fancy cars or to you know buy furniture for their offices um and, and we will also ask palau to write an annual report saying where every dollar of the kofa money has been spent that's just normal you know accountability when u.s taxpayer money is being spent that we require that of anybody and palau will of course um, have an, an annual audit to do. So I, I wouldn't say that's control. That's just, you know, I think responsible spending of taxpayer dollars. Once we, we give the money to Palau, then it's up to Palau how they're going to spend it, you know, within the six, five sectors that I talked about. And sir, I think it's important to know that uh, there's a economic advisory group uh, established with that. And the, economic, uh, the group is, uh, two is appointed by Palau, two is appointed by the U.S., government and one is one have both countries have to agree to that one the fifth uh, nominee so it's very balanced uh, and they're all experienced in in terms of finance and so that's where they also will give the advice to the republic to Palau on that matter yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a caller Oh, there, we, let's get that call. Okay, yeah. Okay, caller on the air. Uh, I just had a question. With the passing of the COFA, uh, are there any benefits going to help the veterans here in Palau? That's the only question I have. I asked that because I probably should have said that right at the top. So. To just a little bit of background first. So the, the compact review agreement is, is where we talked about the $889 million. And, and, and like everyone knows, Congress had to pass that on the U.S. side. And when they did, they added even more to the package. So one of the things that Congress has authorized is exactly that, enhanced benefits for Palauan veterans, v, VA benefits. So for the first time ever, the Veterans Administration is now authorized to provide in Palau care for veterans, and that's that's huge. That's game changing. Will you have an office for veterans in the within the compound? Well, okay. So th there's uh, 
first let me finish my thought oh. because I'm old and I forget my thought if I don't finish it right away. The, um, in addition to the um, in-country benefits, there's also maybe the possibility for those who have more serious issues that need attention like in Guam or, or Hawaii hospitals, they would be a, maybe that travel cost would be reimbursable. Yeah. And also things such as telehealth, telemedicine and, and you know mailing prescriptions and things like that. Um, so, what was your question? See, I forgot this one. Um, will the VA have an office oh, yeah. within the So, okay, so the next step then is, so, so now it's authorized, you know, and the, there's a difference between authorized and appropriated. So over the next one year, the VA will um, work with the Palauan government to kind of negotiate what is possible and, you know, what is uh, affordable and, and things like that. So w while, while we have the great news that this has been authorized for the first time ever by Congress, now we have to figure out the details. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this is coming soon. Um, there's a question, somebody texts a question saying, does the compact include VA loans, I guess, th through these veteran services? Uh, the, the new compact did not specifically mention uh, VA loans, but it does exist. Um, it, it, we have, um, you know, an office in the embassy that works on that, and that will continue for the time being. Okay. So my other question is, with the increasing number of military exercise taking place in Palau, has the USA explored opportunities to collaborate with Palau to expand infrastructure such as ports, airport, hospital, to support these activities? The short answer is yes. So this is very much what our joint committee meetings are about. Um, and we, we're going to meet again next week in Hawaii for the next round of joint committee meetings um, to talk about uh, the runway and the seaport and to a lesser extent, but we will talk about it, the hospital. The, I think the timeliness of that question is the compact agreement, like I think I mentioned, um, not only allows $5 million a year for infrastructure, um, but that $100 million that will go into the trust fund will uh, allow Palau to draw from for the large-scale um, infrastructure projects such as a hospital or a, a new port. And, you know, I want to also add that the U.S. Embassy is talking with our close partners here, Japan, Australia, and Taiwan. How can we together, yeah, help Palau with these big, large-scale infrastructure projects, so one of the ones that are so important, you know, all of those have a multiplicative effect. Mm -hmm. They help um, not only um, with airlines and shipping, but then the jobs that come from in increased tourism and better medical care and things like that. Yeah, and especially with the climate change and uh, our hospitals along the shoreline, yeah. And as you know, it is the, it's been the high tide it's new moon, so the tide is really, it just comes up like almost every year. I'm really hoping, we're, we're going to have to, you know, talk about this a lot. Yeah. It's a very complicated, yes. these, these are complicated projects. But I'm really hoping the United States can help with, with the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we'll, we'll take the signal mm -hmm. from Palau when it's ready to move forward, mm -hmm. and, and I hope we can help. No, I mean, like I mentioned before we started, I haven't seen an ambassador uh, so actively involved in the community. I see you everywhere. You're so active and very, uh, you know, you have your talk shows on Echo and, you know, uh, Irene and he, now here for the first time. And so it's good to have you and we hope that this won't be your last. We hope that you'll come more often. Well, I, I hope, I mean, you're very kind, but the, um, yeah. I, I'm just thrilled to be in Palau. I just am so happy yeah. to hear, be here every day. And you, you say I'm active. I don't know if I feel active, but <laughs> I wake up every day and I'm like, oh my God, I can do all this, this, and this today. I, I, peep, I, I worried, to be honest, perfectly honest, before I came here, you know, I'd heard the country's very small. I was, I was worried, is there going to be enough to do? And I, not for one moment have I been bored. In yeah, fact, I've been, been very, busy. Like, very excited. Um, <laughs> can we get that call? Go ahead. Caller on the air. Oi, sala malungil tasil sila korgaw mga mga chenis. Malungil tasil sila mora ambasador ma chioi ma tangos na chenifer. Ako malgo tukor ba na chioi pa ma chenifer mo mga 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 mga
a whips, marugul de lau, baigal bow house, se met ba a delicate, ba embassy a brigade, ba congress a brigade, a yal bow house, a upper house, ma low house, ba executive a bay dead, ba mal marina suliu, tier per pandra, a tofa pandela, a release sera, marcha, eight. E ti aggiungo che le igane e ciò è ma ambasciatore come io dico. Ti ha il USDA requirement loan 504 loan ma grant. E non ha niente di valore la cinese. A chi blam rurte mo apply get teo. Get mangara e le malo limite non dico che tu ambasciatore se non si trova nel avid senso di le nga am ria gural ma le nga ni ri dan ave ban bo brula application la library e aki bo nga bai ma amru la ri dan la library lo bu nga ma blum to re ke nga la library o me se galo re ke ma es le es el din kulturo i mu la sendia di mo ra re ru ba tu e aki mo ba ki e ngi a bai mo ita ure le ma de ga to o me e me ro mis ka ma ma i ga gi den e ga requirement tra lo ma che mi ha sapito 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 che mi Aye lo no ba quanto lo gmia e ni tibo do todo lo ngesira ader bela ko mal musulang e me ikang Ambassador the caller um expressed his uh, opinion and his feelings uh, about his experience with the USDA rural uh, grant loans uh, um that are housed at the embassy uh, he asked uh, that the uh, you see you look into the problems that they're having in terms of the, the their loan applications that are pending some of them are changing have been are asked to change and um, it's their elderlies who have to make schedule to come to Koror to go to the office and they feel like they're being um, they're at disadvantage and they they're not being helped appropriately and therefore they have stopped uh, with their application so okay well so, uh, thank you oh, before please. you start he first he said he commends you mm -hmm. and the president biden's administration the u.s congress uh the president of palau the old bill of uh, uh senate and house and the council of chiefs and all leaders that uh uh, their gra his gratitude of what the signing of the Compact of Free Association and he said from the bottom of our hearts thank you so much and then he went on saying what Joyce just translated and his frustration that he's been working with Teo that he doesn't do his job and when they go there he talks about fishing and other library issues but he doesn't take care of the customers or the people who are actually coming into the embassy to apply for the grant or the USDA grant or loan. Okay. So, and then it adds on to what Ms. Isal said. Well, okay, well thank you. First of all, then caller, thank you for, you know, the, the mentioning um, of the passage of the COFA. Um, thank you for that. And with regard to the USDA um, housing loans, I've heard from numerous Palauans, in fact, from also you know members of the House of Delegates and, and the Senate, just what an important program that this is for Palau and how much of a help it has been to so many Palauans over the years. Um, so I'm new here, so I apologize if I don't know everything a about the program, but it's, it's obvious to me that this is something that's important to Palauans. So it's very important to me to make sure that we're getting it right um, and that the people of Palau can continue to benefit from the program. I know the the um, the people that I met with before I came out here who, who run the program globally um, want to make it work. So I, I appreciate your feedback. This will help me to inform the leadership throughout USDA all the way back to Washington, D.C. Um, about the need for us to get it right here. Thank you. Uh, 
Hopefully, may hensir sel gari may waseng mo uaisar adara obisra USDA mo melas melsum akli mang hop ng gita tim tingel waseng gamal active ambassador mendi alogol mo take care tiay git mang mal mo maklorong mew adang lengkap mal ngartial do mang medum awase mo magdong mapogudeng ay mang there's always room for improvement mang mal mo maklorong mew e kada mo frustrated nti kada mo maklorong ud ang gayal do ngartial ang ngartial me all nga sergit adang diungil Great. Color on the air. Hello. Uh, good afternoon to everyone, uh, especially Ambassador. Uh, later, ma kami rogul ng tilang. Yakti, yakti gol al direct al malo bangal ng last gol er kada malo masaura. Dura ambasador, mal masal ang Miguel, mar mal na galit na mga taklit na mga ngayigid na lote ida tiyal te alal to korabaro siya mga motokoy para maloro nga sulit. Yamal diwan al kora di ontik please chen e kadim asker ngil wase I know I can mostra benefit sa gire mga na Miguel ang ngawriore kada koro ulit lo sa ngarnya te alal way gamam Ako mga mabringer ka mga 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 kira marigil. Lagi may titulong kira marigil. Hindi ka alal daw may sa atokora grul, mga atokora school, atokora insurance, mga atokora ikal child subsidy, food stamp. I mean, ay kang makarangin mo rin nga te alal. Lagi dal ko kakasabay dal to dar belaw. Bodolar talo si siyo te alal. Merigi dal ko kiknar belaw. Isa ako ra. Adi kan sini orang ke on tiga leng. I think we have enough for mereka laman orang sukit so. Bapak orang di kuk kolongit dan dia kalau longit de. Mereka kalau sebiru kuk mergi de again. Thank you US. Abelah amral ngarul because of tel drong level of entry de. Ekom sulang rogui. Sir, he, uh, thank you, uh, thanks uh, U.S. Ambassador and the U.S. for once it was a dream, this uh, Kampak review uh, uh, that went on, in, that started in 2018, 2020, and now it's a dream. It's uh, something that we don't have to wait until the expiration in the 2024, and it's already happening. Like you said, it starts now. Yeah, so it's a blessing. But his uh, question and his request is uh, if uh, the U.S. or the Muslim would consider um, if Palauans in Palau would be eligible for, um, what shall I say, benefits that uh, maybe the other Palauans are getting in the U.S. in terms of food stamps, uh, and other uh, insurance and other benefits uh, that the Palauans in currently in U.S. might be bene might be benefiting. It's uh, uh, I mean the the simple answer is it, what takes place inside Palau is going to be up to the government of Palau. Um, so perhaps perhaps with this some of this new money that's coming, um, the government of Palau might might you know be able to address some of those issues, but. It's not that that one. What happens inside Palau um, isn't for the U.S. government to decide. But let me add, um, in the in the new legislation, I talked about how Congress added benefits for veterans. Um, they did also add some of these um, assistance program benefits for Palauans living in the United States. The social yeah, the social kind of yeah. service things. So, so I think that's. That's great news, and you know, for Palauans living living in the U.S. And if I can add one more, um, in terms of what Congress added to the original bill, um, is education benefits. So this is immensely going to help, like young families, because it, it includes money for Palau, um, for uh, Head Start and early Head Start programs for uh, students with disabilities, 
to get assistance. And one of the best programs, I think, that's in, in this new legislation, it will allow for Palauans who want to study at public universities in the United States to apply as though they were in-state uh, residents. So that would make you know, higher education much more affordable. I think that's a great benefit. But it still needs to be worked out. Details. I hope we'll get the other call. Okay, great. Go ahead. Caller on the air. Ali Malumil Tafil. Ali Tafil to me, we're a Yoma, a Chenma, Ambassador Ma, Joyce. And Maria Garik, and more Ambassador Ma, Honitra, Joyce, and you will hold to her well in his bologi. Kamkola Gorilla Ambassador was saying, Kodoran Ratola, compact of Tel Mimokuli. Ravel <laughs> Um, sir, uh, the caller asked uh, uh, for your thoughts uh, on that uh, one issue on a one U.S. citizen who has been declared undesirable uh, um, in the end in Palau. He also want ask if um, we would know why and how she that person became um, an undesirable um, alien and how can that person be helped okay thank you for the call I can't ever get into specifics when we're talking about American citizens because of privacy you know laws and, and concerns but I can just say this in general um, you know the United States respects Palau and Palau's um, system of government about Palau's respect for the rule of law. Um, decisions about who can come into Palau are the, are the authority of, of the government of Palau. And, uh, you know, we will, we will respect their decision. <laughs> El tigan artial government amrigel el ngais el privacy act la el dia al sabil mom sadra a ngidil tal adal di individual adra amrigel mangwasen di nguli ya government trablur bela o maigel decision maigel lurelel en din dia al sabil mosoi sebra ku tokora government tra abelau my hope is that I'm going to be able to do this. 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 I'm going to be And there's a text message, Ambassador, that says uh, So, uh, aside from education, health, etc., will the COFA cover these, those people who are faced with poverty in Palau? Well, we're hoping it does, but again, that'll be the responsibility of the government of Palau. So the 
the, the new money, the dramatic increase in money we're hoping will go to the Palauan people. And I think, I think I mentioned already, that's why we've designated for health mm -hmm. education and things like that. And we didn't, we didn't, um, we didn't say the money should go to the politicians mm -hmm. because yes. we want this to be mm -hmm. for the benefit of the people yes. of Palau. And then um, a second text message says, in 1994, original compact agreement provided uh, U.S. was $580 million for 1994 to 2009, FY 1994 to 2009. Adjusting for inflation, inflation this w amount would be approximately uh, $1.04 billion U.S. dollars in 2023. So it says in 2023, the proposed compact review agreement offers U.S. 889 million over the course of 20 year adjusting for inflation. The value of this financial amount in 1994 would be what they mentioned earlier is U.S. 596 million. So I guess it's just a comment on somebody just messaging. All right. Well, that's fair. I don't, I don't know the original amount. I know that the amount that was negotiated in 2010 was much less um, than what, what we offered this time around. So this is a significant increase over the last compact re review agreement. And keep in mind, you know, I think the thoughts on both sides are the ultimate goal is for Palau to become financially independent, independent right? Yes. And so the two sides agreed at this time, this is the amount that, you know, Palau wants and needs. Um, and plus it goes up 2% every year. This, this yes. time it'll go yes. up. The, the, the last compact agreement also went down yes. every year. Yes, to zero. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> But now this is, no, it increases. Uh, this is a win-win yes. for, for both yes. sides, I think. Yeah. And um, actually, I think, Ambassador, I was you were talking, and I think uh, when you mentioned about the in-state tuition and food stamp mm -hmm. and all the benefits that Palans abroad will be benefiting, Actually, I think it'll be probably be more than the 889 million that, because right. I'm sure yeah. that amount is not included in the 889 million. So yeah. it's probably a billion something. Exactly. Yes. Especially if we can get those health benefits yes. for veterans here. And too. not only that, the USDA, there's that grant for uh, people who have retired over 60 or 65. They can get that ten thousand grant for, to renovate their right, home, exactly. and so those. If you actually add it, it's much more than the eight hundred eighty-nine million that we just recently signed. Our, our partnership is yeah. deep. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Um, and enduring. Go ahead. Caller on the air. Oi. Ali. Joyce. Nagal Harwood, we have not been clearing it. In Swagal, no mess clearing it was a ambassador was a sell alm le pass a US Congress and a Biden as a entry. In Subel, send Maria Gapirni, Mal Subel, send the ring in me, Malbora Library, a Congress regil, Amora, a visa president, Malsabed, no mess ring it. Lo hacen nada mal nada al ser. Le estamos con más al todo hoy. Seguida cuestionan. Nos va a dar a pincelar. Le está ahí. Le está ahí. Haru, um, sir, that's uh, Harua Wilter. He's a former deputy director of the Trust Territory who handled it here in Palau until it closed. And so he was the one who handled He's the, yeah, he's, um, uh, retired in here in Palau and he used to handle his money, the compact money with the government of Palau. And even prior to the compact, uh, uh, he was dealing with the money coming from the U.S. government to Palau. Yeah, he was uh, my boss too. Really? <laughs> he was my boss at DOI, OTIA Palau. So his uh, request is if we could send the 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 actual law that the uh, POTUS signed uh, at the White House uh, um, to him. Also, he wants a copy to the president, wants a copy to the uh, both houses at the Palau Congress because it's a long-term um, uh, marriage 
that yeah. all have to have a copy of it, <laughs> and they, uh, he likes to have access so he can review that. We will. You know how to get in. Touch? Yes. Okay. So yes. we will get that to you through Joyce. But for anybody out there who's interested, the legislation um, is online. You can you can Google um, you know the um, the last bill. I can't remember what it's called. Mm -hmm. Jason, remember what it's called? But it, you can Google it by the date it was passed. You know, March eighth. And March so this is the contract review amendment, then. but the legislation itself. But I just wanted to um, let you know. So the the bill that passed is 1,100 pages long. <laughs> the the part that relates to the compact doesn't start until page like 960. So please, if you're going to go look at the entire bill, don't start at page one, oh, and and page yeah, start at page 960, and then that's where the that's where the law is. But we will get you, we will get you. Um, and and it's a thank you for calling. It's an honor to meet you over the phone. <laughs> Uh, maybe Haruwa or Rengs, uh, maybe you should em invite Ambassador to your talk show. He has a talk show every oh, really? Wednesday at 2 o'clock. It's called Government is Our Responsibility. Oh, yeah. And he was supposed to have his talk show yesterday, but because President was coming and you, he decided to have it today at 3.30. But now they said no tomorrow because they're busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm interested yeah. in that. <laughs> we'll tell, take that call. Color on the air. Hi, Jane. Uh, will afternoon. Uh, will uh, Tasil, Ambassador. Uh, good afternoon. I would like to uh, personally uh, call you and express my gratitude, along with the rest of Palau. I believe uh, this is a historic event for us. Uh, I must admit that I was sort of worried, considering the world over, with all of the problems uh, that are happening around the world, uh, with the uh, United States being tied up uh, in many projects around the world, uh, and with the economy, uh, state of economy around the world, uh, affected by the COVID, I was beginning to be very worried that uh, this negotiation was not going to be sealed uh, and I was afraid as in the past will be something part of the of the continuing uh, resolution uh, but I am really really happy I have never been happy uh, since uh, my 13th birthday when I became a teenager I thought I was one of the best uh, uh, accomplishment in life. So I uh, want to, when I heard that you're going to be on the radio, I wanted to just uh, call and uh, express my personal gratitude as a Palawan uh, for this uh, monumental event uh, that has happened in my lifetime. And uh, I, I just considering the, uh, all of the, the problems that are going on, uh, this is close to a miracle uh, for us to accomplish and for us to make sure that uh, we, at least for the next 20 years, uh, Palau will be at least uh, at peace, have a peace of mind uh, to know that uh, we are secured. Uh, and so with that, uh, Ambassador, uh, my uh, personal gratitude and uh, Thanks to you and the people of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you said you use the term monumental occasion. I couldn't agree more. I, I do believe this is a monumental occasion. I wasn't quite as worried as you, and, and I probably shouldn't admit this in public. I was starting to maybe get a little worried. Um, everybody kept assuring me, you know, the, the good news all along was, this was a bipartisan supported bill. Nobody in the United States government was against getting the COFA done. It just got caught up in our own internal, you know, budget system and politics. So thank you for your patience, I guess. It would be my message to you. Um, and, and hopefully a month from now, a year from now, we'll forget about the 10 months it took to get through and we'll be talking about all the, all the positive change it, it brought. Caller on the air. Oh, 
a US citizen. Ngarinya lah ay ambasador ng Lubelaw in 99 years or 50 years at that time. Agisyo tayo na kao mga tibiday invitation ng mga citizen ng mga Amerikan. Tirgel, mga takatan all the age ng Amerikan ako tulbuto ka ang milyonaire ngay. Mga asim ng mga Lubelaw ay girit tirgay gina ng Tirgel doon si Virgen Manamo, all the age. Bel Kervelao, 99 years. And mga doon ang lili rin sabi, eh, they'll win your appointment tra na ha. I tell a 99 years. E kung mahal mo silang, eh, eh, ambasador ka o matiyoy si ma, at Jennifer. And may ikaw. Good Um, sir, the last caller was just saying, um, he likes to open the 99 years and 50 years and it's existing in Palawan law in Palawan where they in, uh, and for outsiders to come in and invest in business but he says invite all the U.S. elderly so maybe retirees yes. to come millionaires so they have a lot of millionaires in the U.S. invite them to come in and establish their homes uh, and stay and, yes. and they invest and they can be renewed after 99 years. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if I can, I, if I have the power to c convene them, but you know what? I, I wish I could get more Americans to come to Palau because they would love it. I mean, they, if they loved it half as much as I did, they would, to your point, they would want to stay here. They'd want to invest. I think we do need, it, it's a fine line, right? Do we want to get more people to come and then, you know, Palau gets maybe overdeveloped or something like that or do we want to keep Palau the best kept secret in the world? I think <laughs> the, the key is to find, you know, that economic growth without ruining Palau's customs, traditions and, you know, the old ways. But I, I, I will do my best to bring more Americans here. I, I, I love it here. Maybe if United Airlines drop their fares. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can negotiate on bringing more uh, U.S. aircrafts. <laughs> but I, I also, caller, I appreciate you thinking that I know millionaires. <laughs> I, I don't really run in those circles very no, often. No, he thinks that you know a lot of uh, retired major league baseball players, <laughs> major league baseball players. <laughs> Owners. Yes, our owners. Yes, Giants. Uh, Madrid's Blythe team. Yeah, He's yeah. playing for Mets now, or Detroit Tigers this year. Oh yeah. So. Well, it's uh, almost an hour. Um, we can wrap up. I think there's no callers anymore. But I just want to ask something. My mom asked me to say, if you go, I don't want to call because my voice, people will recognize me. She's, um, she's really diehard chewing betel nut. And every time she travels to uh, the US, when she uh, get when she's about to land in Hawaii, she has to throw away her bit on that. <laughs> so she was wondering if there's any way that um, we can work with the U.S. government, Hawaii, to see if Palauans can uh, import bit on that. Because we went to San Francisco last month, and when we went to these Vietnamese stores and Chinese stores, they're selling um, bitter nut, but frozen bitter nut that's imported from Yap. Really? And they're actually selling bottled owls from Yap, and it's $12 just for this small one. And these frozen bitter nut, there's 20 inside, and it's four ninety nine, but of course without ta the VAT tax. So she was wondering, can you help all the Palauans who are into this tradition in chewing bitter nut? How can we work on uh, importing bitter nut Boy. to the U.S. <laughs> or know. exporting? Sorry, I don't export. know anything about bitter nut exports, <laughs> but um, you know what? I was with uh, I was with another uh, person today who you know who's very into entrepreneurship in, in Palau, and um, this is a great project for somebody to come up with a healthy betel nut chewing gum or something like that <laughs> that can replace you so know so you don't spit yeah, right. maybe, and you maybe don't get these stained teeth there, that's, there's the next like hot product right I think we need to just uh, go into AI and ask <laughs> AI can it come up with something right? uh, about chewing gum instead of chewing betel nut <laughs> but yeah okay so um, I guess we don't have any colors uh, we can wrap up. Thank you. Once again, thank you so much. Happy Youth Day. Mm -hmm. And we'll be there tomorrow. Um, when President was here earlier, I said, oh, 
maybe we'll have uh, Senator Salvador and uh, donate his team to come and uh, do a live on the signing of the note. So Senator has approved it. So oh, they'll great. be doing it live Fantastic. and filming it. Right. Yeah. So and then uh, I asked President if he can just inform 87.9. Maybe they can be the main producer and just link through them so Fantastic. everybody abroad can witness and see um, the signing tomorrow and the opening of the Little League. Well, that's why I'm so grateful that you had me here today because I think it's really important for mm -hmm. all Palauans mm -hmm. to understand the COFA, mm -hmm. what it means for them, you know, and what it means for mm -hmm. the United States and Palau for the years ahead. So thank you for this mm -hmm. opportunity. No, thank you so much for coming and anytime. Please do let us know, and we'll, we would love to have you back on the show. Thanks. Nada. Would you? Happy you day. Ako maran musulan mlo sa pinun lomes. Orang sertiang, mo mo sertiara real. Ako mga ta weekend, dem mga tolong ito lo asipo mga gigik lo mga gal, mga moli, mga mosi ga designated driver. Happy you day. Yadios lo mol mlo maknal tanga tergit matyal balwat ko mal musulang.